Hi, friends. The world got you down. Don't be sad. Listen to $2 Late Fee with Zach and Dustin. $2 Late Fee is the podcast that celebrates the best decade of entertainment, the 1980s. We pick a movie and soundtrack from our youth that we loved and see if it holds up today. We also interview your favorite celebrities from that era. All in the spirit of positivity and togetherness. Check us out at $2LateFee.com. Of Horror Movie Night, we got myself, who's been here since day one. We've got Scott, who's been here since day one. We've had Kyle, who's been here a couple months. And we also have the triumphant return, temporarily, of Brian Kelly! Hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really nice to meet you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy who has seen Brian have a full-on panic attack because he saw a box of a pile of pizza boxes uh, yes <laughs> this is true this is true i didn't realize that was you ah shit i'm sorry I totally uh, forgot. so brian we were talking about this and i almost spilled the beans on this and then scott correctly was like no let brian retell the story some of you who maybe haven't listened to every single episode of horror movie night you know that when it comes to the 50th episode it's usually something that's tied to like classic horror movie moments or references so like when brian was doing six degrees of beetlejuice by the time we got to episode 200 we finally just did beetlejuice you are what i would say the the biggest piece of why we finally landed on doing the lost boys for episode 350 and it stems from your very first what did i watch this week (laughs) during your first episode as a full-time third host (laughs) Do you remember yeah. what the episode was, Brian? Because I do. I don't. Well, it was bugged. Bugged. Oh, <laughs> bugged. Bugged. All right. I will begrudgingly tell this story. Um, I didn't want to tell this story because Kyle has a new short coming out, and I don't want him to feel incompetent as a filmmaker when I tell him my <laughs> wife's vision for film. <laughs> No. no, that's okay. That's okay. I appreciate. Thank you for the trigger warning. Yes, I will yes. hold. I will hold on. You should still chase life. your dreams. This will make you feel like what? What's the point? But <laughs> you know, some people are naturals. So <laughs> we watched it, and you know how the the intro, right? I I vaguely remember that. I didn't watch the movie. I, I got to admit. But <laughs> so it's like I any see. other episode of horror movie night that Brian's on. <laughs> <laughs> the security guard, right? And then it's like a POV shot of the camera flying at him, which leads the audience to believe that it's a vampire flying at him. And I was watching it with my my not knowing she was going to be my wife one day. And she goes, see, if I made this movie, I would do things a little differently. And I said, oh, would you? And I said, yeah, I would, I would do that exact shot the same way it was. And then later on in the movie, the security guard comes back up and the audience is like, I thought he died. I thought he got killed. And then it turns out that the camera was a B. <laughs> so Kyle, are you done submitting your film to film festivals? I, yeah. I don't even want to talk movies. <laughs> you can't top it. No. Jeez. <laughs> so, and I'm hoping that there's no reason that the security guard comes back. Other than to show that it was just a bee. To yeah. show that it was just a bee sting. He's like, he's just, swole, he's just swollen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't trust the audience. So he's got to like have a big, he's like, oh my God, you know, last Sunday at night I was leaving the carnival and the, a bee came at me. A week, a week ago. <laughs> I would like to, colla- I would like to collaborate with. Yeah. You can remove the stinger. He's like, ah, what's the point? I am looking for for a, I'm always looking for a writing partner uh, to really boost my standings as a filmmaker. Jim Kelly, I think that yeah, I think I'd like to uh, have a meeting. I, as much as I would mock Brian for not watching The Lost Boys, I watched it yesterday and I thought to myself afterwards, why? 
because, because I wrote down exactly two notes when I was halfway through the movie and thought, I've seen this movie like a hundred times. I almost know it verbatim. What new information am I about to gleam out of this watching of the movie? Now, I, Brian, the however, oh, yeah. I <laughs> yeah. want to note, Brian, however, remember. Brian, however, probably should rewatch the movie because when he called me yesterday to tell me he was going to be on the episode, he's like, I might not have time to watch the movie, but that's fine. I've seen it a million times. I mean, we're just going to talk about the shirtless guy playing a trumpet for a little bit. And then there was a pause and he goes, or was it a saxophone? I don't remember. What he's <laughs> <playing>. <laughs> Like, yeah. I, you know, and here's the thing is that I have known Brian for a long time, not as long as Matt has, but I think a significant amount of time. I can't tell if he would be joking or if that's like really him being an idiot. <laughs> so I knew it was a sax, but I did not intentionally say trumpet. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a, it's a great non-admittal, like yeah. 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 Way, way Brian's definitely that. a both sides kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, brass, brass, and woodwind. You yeah. know, they yeah. have a lot of good Love arguments it. on both sides of the Lost Boys yeah. discussion of what instrument is he playing. You should I've see. Heard from, I've heard from the saxophone camp, and I've heard from the trumpet camp, yeah. and they both have compelling arguments. You should yeah, watch exactly. them run for president. They're <laughs> yeah. gonna be like, Man. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly. What are your thoughts on the war? I'm really like, good question. What What are your thoughts on the war? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, well, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Man, can you imagine if it was saxophone player versus trumpet player for president? Matt Kelly would literally be that meme of the guy who's like got the two buttons and he's sweating. Sweating. Yeah. <laughs> like Dude. ska Matt Kelly would not know what to do. That's a tough call, brother. I don't know if I told you guys this, but I learned that politics were stupid in third grade when they taught us about politics and we had to vote between the cookie and it was between an Oreo and a Chips Ahoy and Chips Ahoy blew Oreo out of the water and I couldn't accept that loss. I was so <laughs> upset. No, it's also racist. So that's like the biggest thing. That's just pure racism, which is pure <laughs> politics. Yeah. So he did grow up in Philadelphia. Yeah. Oh, like, dude, you got to get out of there, brother. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's that's Georgia. I understand. It's not even a vote. It's like, hey, you know, like chocolate chip cookies, they're really good. Yeah, but what if they had the texture of a sponge? How would you feel about that? <laughs> My dad loves that shit. That racist bastard. <laughs> I'm just assuming that Brian's connection is going to fail before we even get to talking about the movie. Mm -hmm. So our friend Cody uh, messages us on, on our Instagram and goes, Hey guys, just had some, you know, bad stuff happening. And I want to let you know that you're um, a constant source of positivity in my life during this difficult time. And I really appreciate you guys, <laughs> except I'm having a hard time forgiving you for your April's fool's day episode. And Matt promptly writes back before I can even get on Instagram and read the fucking thing matt immediately responds back i'm so glad that we could be a help in this time of need thanks gelsey chris and dylan and it was just i want everybody to know that i wasn't going to give matt the double satisfaction of telling the story about his own joke that he's so fucking proud of because mm -hmm. matt does need to be reined in every once in a while we have to put the muzzle on matt kelly sometimes if you listened to our episode 350 patreon bonus matt mentioned that he had to stop himself from starting another podcast what are you trying to prove <laughs> that's <laughs> the guy like God is up there, you know, and he's just like, I gave this guy the cock the size of a baby's leg. <laughs> and it's not enough. Oh, Brian literally took eight months off for that <laughs> to bring yeah. us back to that. So, All right. oh, so Lost Boys God. 1987. Oh, man. Reset, <laughs> reset. All right. So first thing I got to call out, I know it's cliche. <laughs> Holy shit, this movie has a really good soundtrack. <laughs> like That was written so, by someone who had not seen a single frame of it, which I just think is incredible. No. Yeah. No. The director thought it was impressive. The director was like, holy shit, how did you write this thou shall not kill shit without even seeing the movie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, they're like, uh, I've read it somewhere. I've definitely heard the line thou shall not kill somewhere. I think it'll be good uh, in a song. What could that be? What? <laughs> it's on the tip Let's of see. my tongue. Yeah, Man. yeah, interesting. Maybe I should ask my father. <laughs> so, also, the the craziest note that I, like I said, I only wrote down two or three things. One of the notes is, 
I'm pretty sure that's David Cross on the <laughs> on the boardwalk. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure if you know who I'm, what I'm talking about, but during the People Are Strange scene, there's a dude who's got like his hoodie up. And he's yeah, smoking a cigarette, and he turns and looks at the camera, and I swear to Christ, it looks like 2010, David Cross. <laughs> that is that the, the hippie? Because, like, I went to the IMDb trivia, and the IMDb trivia took me a half an hour to read through, which is insane. And yeah. second of all, a lot of it was doubles. And so people... But it, was, it wasn't identical doubles. It was the same information written by multiple people. And they kept talking about how they did a casting call for all these extras. And it's like huge, 2,000 extras or something like that. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> one of them, they, they called out two of them specifically. One was the drugged out hippie and the other one was the homeless uh, Jesus or something okay. like that. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe that you're referring to the drugged out hippie. It's probably... That's- Possibly mm-hmm. accurate. Uh, you said two thousand extras. Is that what you? Yeah, said? that's what they. Yeah. That I mean, they, that's like, what it says on IMDb. Right. I mean, I, 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 I would, I would venture to say that that's accurate because I think that. I mean, that concert alone probably has like two thousand. Th- that's yeah. what I'm saying, and I, we've watched a lot of movies. We, I, I have, and I know that Horror Movie Night has watched a lot <laughs> You're of part movies. Of us. That You've I been know, I, part of us for I, a long time. Uh, the we uh, of we watching together is sure. not as much as what, how we've watched separate. But we do talk about movies with full songs or performance sequences often. And this one takes the fucking cake. Like, <laughs> the, the crowd is directed like it is, like, legit the best fucking show they've ever been to. Like, it's the most magical night, like, once in a fucking, like, that summer, everybody was having the time of their life. And I was just like, I'm watching motherfucking Tim, right? Is it Tim... Uh, Tim, Capello? Tim Capello. Yep. Yeah. Tim Capello. Okay. I'm watching that dude go. And I'm like, I don't know if I would be like fucking loving it as much as all these people. <laughs> but the energies felt like pretty uh, uh, addictive. Like I Kyle was Scott. I was like, I want to go. I want to go there. I want to go Scott to and, there. Scott and I have both been at a convention where Tim Capello was not too far from our table. I have a picture with him. Yeah, and I, I can tell you, him, you know, that, that's him. That man shows the flesh yeah, <laughs> in person. And he's yeah. like 60 and he looks amazing. He looks yeah. great. He does. Probably the most unfortunate horror movie night moment in history was no one but myself and the Jersey Ghouls going to the horror movie night, or to the Monster Mania where G. Tom Mack performed all of the songs from his Lost Boys musical. <laughs> and <laughs> we got to witness just the worst shit you can imagine i wish man i remember you telling me about that and just being like fuck there's a frog brother song that you could probably track down that is a straight up sea shanty <laughs> yes you, you did mention that one time i forgot about that it just doesn't track for me they're not shanty they're not shantying brothers they're not shanty me. boys can you imagine if robert eggers got g tom mac to score the the lighthouse because he heard the sea shanty from the lost boys he was like, uh, yes. musical and was like Gotta have it. Yeah, I'm a filmmaking genius. <laughs> besides Jade <laughs> Kelly, uh, <laughs> second, 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 yeah, second yeah. filmmaking genius. Well, quick on the music, I do want to share my beer because I picked the oh yeah the perfect beer for this. Little Sister from oh, Graysdale Brewing. <laughs> like I, I couldn't, I couldn't pass up Little Sister just based on uh, track alone. So based on and, music alone. And I'm, and I'm and not Scott, gonna make think, this a, I'm not gonna make this a habit, but. I figured since it was our, it was it was a uh, an anniversary episode, and this jumped out at me. I've had it before. I like it a lot, but my tummy hurts too much to drink it tonight. But it is Vlad. Mm. It's literally oh. got people on on spikes on the front of it. That's fucking perfect. Um, it it also is. I mean, they're a local brewery. They are they're an, uh, an Ohio brewery, and I want to say that they are they're in, they're literally the next town over. This is a strong beer. It's it's a thirteen percenter. So oh yeah, that's why yeah. Scott's tell me is not no no. <laughs> you hold on tonight. to that. All yeah, right, that so, one's for a day that I don't feel like crappiness already. That's right. So real quick, now on Spotify, Lost Boys Story, the songs from the musical by G. Tom Mack, and I tracked down Frog Brothers Hero music. It's a blood drip job and it don't pay what and it's 24-7 on the week. Dude, they got Tom Waits? 
<laughs> G, G, uh, Tom, G Tom waits. G that's Tom not really waits. a sea oh shanty. Look, I'm pulling as much from as if seven you, years ago. <laughs> that was more like if you uh, were in a movie based in New Orleans and the uh, the bad guy was about to tell you his whole master plan. Like that's <laughs> it's a Scooby Doo. It's Scooby Doo. Yeah, what it is. You know, and it's talk about Corey Haim from... real quick. I want to talk yes. about Corey Haim for a quick second. That because... fucking jaw of his, man. <laughs> well, I was gonna say the audacity of this movie both trying to sell Corey Haim as cool bad boy who also has an encyclopedic knowledge of comic book runs is real wild real wild scripting choice in 1987 yeah what the fuck was that about he's walking in like he's the lead singer of madness and then he's just like you can't put this Superman comic next to here. Kryptonite hasn't been invented yet or some bullshit. It's like, he's got radioactive blood. <laughs> yeah. That's because you don't have divorced parents, Matt. True, <laughs> true. <laughs> you know? Also, they just, it's funny because I feel like that scene is also the last time they try to convince us that Corey Haim is cool because it's like 20 minutes later when he's singing I Ain't Got a Man while taking a bathtub by himself, which is Man. more my speed. No, you're not taking a bubble bath. You're, ta- you're, you're doing a uh, bath bomb. Uh, Bath, uh, witch baby bath bomb, um, in your clawfoot tub too, that's two feet yeah. short. That's and we, that's the issue. It's not. We're not here to shame anyone. I love a bath as much as the next guy, but you need a bath that fits the proportions of you. Matt right. looks like a guy in an old saloon who had his knees out of one of those little wooden barrels. <laughs> He's just right. yeah. Yeah. washing himself Completely with a stick. Folded. Yeah. He's Mel Gibson in Maverick. Yeah, it's like great if you're like, hmm, I want to sit in my sink, but my knees won't allow it. <laughs> That's why they fired me from the restaurant that I worked at. I just needed a bath in their big <laughs> their I thought big that you were saying that you were bathing your son in the dish oh the dish no soap. no no me me i wouldn't sub- <laughs> i wouldn't subject him to that he needs his food serve license and i just don't want to get that for him yeah yeah we don't want to score this early on can we also talk about like the frog brothers just like zero subtlety in their pitch you know like they they show up Corey haim shows up shames them for their store and they're like, here, you should read this comic we made ourselves called Vampires All, All Around or whatever. That's the most Matt Kelly thing you can do, though. No, no, I agree with that. But it's like, then they come, then he comes back in the next day and they're just like, so did you read the comic? What do you think? Again, Still Matt that's Kelly. Matt yeah. Kelly. Like, this is like, I don't understand what you're getting at here because... I can't hold a secret. They would have walked in. I would have been like, yo, there's some vampires in this shit. Obviously, I don't think we're going to successfully get through this movie. So, what are some topic? What are some moments that you want to talk about? In the movie, I, I have one thing. I, I we were, I brought up memes earlier, and I, I the, the there's one thing about this movie that uh, that actually stuck out when I read for 30 minutes all of the shit that people think is interesting about this movie. It's just is mind blowing that I didn't know this until I'm almost 40. They put glitter in the blood. Did you guys know that? Mm-hmm. No, they were like you know, it didn't see, shine enough. Were bitching about Twilight all this. Yeah, time, exactly. That's that there. meme. Somebody posted <laughs> that meme that was like, you know, vampires now, and it was you know Twilight. Uh, Robert Pattinson and Twilight, and it's like vampires in my in the eighties or my day or whatever, and it's like a picture of Kiefer Sutherland, and he's like they sparkle. Also, like let's not pretend that fucking near dark isn't like pseudo pre. Twilight also. I think it was Joel Schumacher who said, I will only do a vampire movie because vampires are the only erotic monster, which is a fair assertion. I'm fine with that. If you think about them, nobody else fucks as many monsters. No one gets as much ass as vampires, vampires, right? Because like, yeah, some people have sex with zombies either knowingly, which is problematic, or unknowingly, which is the way that you get zombified sometimes. You know, like, I'm, we've seen episode one of Horror Movie Night. We saw somebody blow a werewolf. There's body horror where people are kind of having sex while they're, oh, meet the feebles. That guy is is is, is sexually assaulting the girl. She turns into a cockroach. You know what I mean? Oh, there, yeah. are other, there are other Oh, meet creatures. the apple gates. Meet the apple gates. What did I say? Meet the meet feebles. The f- oh, they're the same. I thought we were going puppet mind. sex. I was like, oh, there God. Okay. Sex yeah. in that movie, there's isn't puppet there? sex. Yeah. I love puppet <laughs> sex as much as the next guy. Um, mm-hmm. I would like. I think it's unfair because Hollywood forced it that way. I feel that Gilman could be equally 
sexualized if he was in the twilight instead of I mean the he was sexualized he was did you sexualized see shape by of Guillermo del Toro yeah, <laughs> yeah. no Where but do you think this like, fish they, came they from? did it too different they did it differently like i just want to have you know Kirsten it wasn't Stewart hot enough just kind of like <laughs> look at, looking over and it's just like <laughs> <laughs> I there are like four kinks that just came to mind that man if somebody was on OnlyFans and and needed a needed a niche mm-hmm. Gilman sex is definitely something girls could do that because there are bad dragons and there are those uh, the egg insertion things and stuff that I really wish my brain didn't know about mm-hmm. but yes there there mm-hmm. there is definitely a market for that so um if you're trying to make that that green um that Not- seaweed you uh, oh, yeah. go go and go and go and do that there creepy shit for there for the internet. Is. I can't think of any vampire movie except for Thirty Days of Night where there isn't like a sexual aspect of it, right? Like, can you right. guys think of anything? No, no, 30 30 Days of Night is like the fast zombies of vampire. Yes, like lore, yeah. right? It's like those vampires are a specific type of vamp. But no, there's always some sort of like eroticism or sensuality within vampires and if there isn't then you failed at your job like you didn't do your job <laughs> like that's yeah. the whole point well, you know especially even I mean? like thinking about the 90s like jesus christ like bram stoker's dracula and interview buffy? with the vampire all of like, buffy <laughs> yeah i mean like i think like salem's lot is probably the least sexy oh, but i yeah. don't think that it's not i don't think that it's not tapping into that i just don't think it I, again it's just not it's like super successful i, I, would, I like, would toss nosferatu in the <laughs> In the conversation. Yeah. More like nuts mm-hmm. for art too. I don't know. <laughs> nuts and it's for just you? For say, no. Yeah, he's just for saying that for sake of argument. Matt is not saying that he wants to fuck Nosferatu. So no one who's hearing this, please do not take and take this piece of audio and leave it that Matt Kelly wants to fuck Nosferatu because it's not true. It's not true. Don't it's make not any photo Sferat edits true. of me <laughs> yes. in a loving embrace with Nosferatu. Yeah, I don't want that bad. It's not true. Yeah, not true Nosferatu. That's <laughs> <laughs> this movie. I also need to give the shout out to the fact that this movie is still really funny. Like, there's a oh, lot yeah. of lines that still like the Corey Feldman has what I would argue is the best line when they go down to kill the vampires and it doesn't go well. And he's like, they tricked us. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> How? And he goes, they opened their eyes and spoke. <laughs> and it's like... I, You know, I didn't, like, grow up with the Corys. Like, any sort of fandom towards them is lost on me. But hmm. hey, Corey felt... I know. But Corey Feldman in this is fucking hysterical. He's like, so I love him. He's so funny. He's so funny. Just playing it totally straight. He sounds like a professional wrestler, like, just trying to set, like, promo on every fucking, like, it's because he's coming he down from a major coke binge on this movie. Yeah. Did you know that? Huge. I did not. Was that, that on the trivia three that's times? That's not a joke. That's what? not a bit. That's, like, yeah. literally trivia about yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I believe it. He's, he's, he's peaked. He's had a rough, that, rough yeah. time. But, you know, I do love him in this because mm-hmm. this and Goonies feel like peak wholesome Corey. Yeah. I think it also mm-hmm. shows his range because this is such a different character than Mouth. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I I think so because it's like Mouth. You've got this like high pitched, fast talking, like wheeling and dealing type, like lie every second motor Mouth. But like in this, he is like way more reserved throughout mm-hmm. the entire movie until like the shit hits the fan. And even yeah. then, he's not like. Like, think about him and Mouth. There are literally scenes where he is just, like, going a mile a minute to, like, trick people up in his lie versus mm-hmm. this. He's just like, read this book. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, we got to talk about, I guess, the big closing line. You know, there's one thing I always hated about living in Santa Carlo or Santa whatever, all the Santa goddamn Carla. vampires. Yeah. yeah. It's a good line. So, I, 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 was, I was pretty shocked. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> We all know, you know, I think we, we, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about that, you know, famous line that's embedded in all of our minds. Um, I, uh, oh, I don't like this town. What was it? Um, you know, this town is, uh, would be good if there wasn't, you know what I'm saying? The famous line we all know by heart. Yeah, you know, yeah. Matt could have glossed over it and edited it out, but now he can't. Now you can't. 
You can't uh, lose. You can't lose this. So, Brian, you're going to continue your sabbatical after this? <laughs> yeah. Dude, this isn't spike, Brian. This is like I'm almost delirious with lack of sleep, Brian. Um, so maybe it yeah. works. It plays. It plays. <laughs> it's wonderful. We got the Frog Brothers on here. Did anybody think one of those fucking uh, vampires in the gang looked like Andy Samberg in a blonde wig? Uh, <laughs> the one that wasn't Alex Winter or Kiefer Sutherland? That dude's like Red Samberg to me. <laughs> Obviously, I know it's not, but like he was annoying as shit. I didn't <laughs> like that guy at all. What you say about Andy Samberg? Yeah, that was, mean. Um, that was mean. Oh, no, I love Andy Samberg, but I don't like a uh, knockoff <laughs> vampire before Samberg mm-hmm. existed. Samberg? Yeah. Um, that's my yeah, least okay. favorite Samberg. Yeah, sure. He's then, just a Stanberg. Uh, that's my I mean, boy. I'd, li- and then I'd like to favorite. say that in the Buttercream Gang, there is a Widow oh Jenkins, <laughs> and there is a Widow Johnson in The Lost Boys, and I just kept thinking that they, the Buttercream Gang is just the Lost Boys Actually, for, okay. for Mormons. Here I, hold on a second. I have a fun fact for you guys. I can't believe that I forgot about this. Did any of you read the four issue sequel that they eventually put out based on what was going to be the original script for Lost Boys 2? I've seen like screenshots of screen prints of it, but I haven't read the whole thing, no. So the comic book and the original script was going to take off right where this movie leaves off, where Michael is still a vampire and they're trying to figure out why. And Grandpa reveals that he is in the exact same state of transformation as Michael because it turns out that the widow is actually who's in charge of the entire vampire clan. So they have to go and meet the widow Jenkins to fight her to like unlock Grandpa and Michael from their vampires. <laughs> I'm not fucking mad about that. That's, that <laughs> like, rules. You know if you're going to have to do a sequel, not the worst way to do it. It's yeah, definitely dumb better than to just- work. Yeah, like, oh, and that was the other thing. It was going to reveal that Keither's character didn't die because he didn't truly get staked. He was just, like, thrown into the deer's antlers, and since they didn't kill the head vampire, he's mm-hmm. still alive and active. Is he active, or is he still, like, stuck in the deer? Stuck. <laughs> he's just, he's got Guys, a Guys, I'm going to get you, and I get out of Looking like a saggy Madonna. With <laughs> looking a, like Matt in a bad point spell. Just... Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm okay with that. It, I will never get it now, obviously. Instead, we got, I believe, two or three movies where the Frog Brothers go to extreme sports events to fight vampires or some bullshit. <sighs> Um, yeah we haven't that's on my short list too no no i'm just kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding it's that's on my list it's not on it's, uh, it's, but not it's on, on two it's, it's, on two, it's on my two list yeah. Yeah, yeah i could see brian when he comes back being like it's so great to be back no more bad picks we had such a good time with lost boys let's do lost boys to the tribal is my first pick yeah, brian's smiling because he knows that his short-term memory is so fucked that he's gonna forget that we remember. even did this episode <laughs> Hey, do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I'm Shane O'Hare of the Geekscape Games Podcast, the number one video game podcast on the Geekscape.network. Join myself, Derek Krenevelt, and a guest every fortnight as we discuss video game news, video game reviews, and dissections. That's Geekscape Games every two weeks on Geekscape.net. How about we take a second to talk about double features? <laughs> Brian, why don't you go first? Because um, you are the specialist guest. Perfect. So I will double feature this with a show, actually. Me and my wife, before we moved to Georgia, were brought up here and we're staying at an Airbnb. And for whatever reason, the only show that this Airbnb had watched on Netflix, I just continued watching, was called Designated Survivor. <laughs> 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 You've talked about this on the show before on a what do we watch this week. It is so ridiculous. Like everything bad that can happen can happen. I'm picking Fright Night mainly because I got confused with which movie was which 
and how either one ended. I think I've only seen Fright Night once and Lost Boys. This is my second time. And for some reason, I did not get the endings right until the video store owner popped up. And I was like, oh, that's this movie. Okay, yeah, cool, cool, Mr. cool, cool. Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, we're back. We're <laughs> but, but I think they're both fun, like, you know, uh, of their time, vampire movies that have some really cool choices and effects. And I think Fright Night's probably a little more, like, fun. I, like, I read Lost Boys a little more intensely than I wanted to. And Fright Night... I remember just being very, very fun. Joel Schumacher right, just lean, leans fun. right into some serious shit that I'm like, oh, you're talking about it in a weird way, but thank you. So yeah, Fright Night's mine. Hey, hey, Matt, I'm sorry. I'm going freaked. That was not what my pick was going to be. I, um, I'm actually upset shocked. with you that I didn't yeah. get to, 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 Hurt to gotcha. <laughs> Hurt your feelings. No. Yeah, I was like... I don't really want to watch Freaked again, but I mean, if I'm going, I mean, with you don't have Alice to ask me to twice to watch. Yeah, Freaked. of course, I will always you're, you're be gonna, happy to. Well, this um, is this is my double feature night. I'm gonna make my wife yeah. happy by watching her favorite horror movie, Lost Boys. I'm going to make my co-hosts very happy by watching his favorite horror movie. There Freaked. we go. And how are you um, gonna make yourself happy, Scott? I'm gonna slow jerk in front of both of them. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> my pick is a little out there. Uh oh! Crazy! My double, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> my double <laughs> feature is gonna be us, uh, the Jordan Peele movie Us, because mm. if you remember the opening oh, yeah. scene, they imply that they're filming a vampire movie on the yep. pier, and it's uh, 1986. I like so, when they do that. I like that. Yeah. Gilmore del Toro did that at the end of uh, the movie he just made. Uh, Nightmare Alley. Alley. Yeah, it like went to the freak show, and it was clearly all the freaks from uh, the movie Freaks. And I was like, yeah. oh, which dovetails right into that. the movie that I picked because it was called Freak Ed. Yeah, look at that. Brian, what did you watch at all in the last eight months that you've been gone? <laughs> Designated <laughs> Survivor. He already said it. Yeah. yeah. It's been months, and I know what his work schedule is. So there's probably only about one to two things for him to choose <laughs> from anyway. I think the only newest movie that I think is like three years old that I happened to stumble across, which surprisingly was really good was villains yeah i liked villains i liked it too and i was like nervous when i saw who made it because i remember uh i remember watching steak land and i sometimes i was like "Ah," and then sometimes i was really engaged and then like the movie ended and i was like wow that was awful yeah and then i was like wow this is actually like a pretty uh like entertaining fucking movie i I don't know it's nice and short too that's the other big benefit blissfully short yeah, it was like 80 minutes or something. Only took right, me three. Right in my wheelhouse. Yeah, it took me three <laughs> days to watch, but still. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it took you, uh, was it 21 days to finish Eating Alive? Oh, my God. I don't even know what that oh, movie God. was about. I'll go next because there's not really much to say. The only other person that would have watched this would probably have been Brian. I watched uh, the show Human Resources on Netflix, which is their spinoff of Big Mouth. Uh, that's all just like the hormone monsters and anxiety monsters and whatever working at an office. It's a really, I mean, if you like Big Mouth, you'll like it. It's exactly what you expect out of it. I watched a Massacre Mafia style, okay. uh, which is, it's on, uh, I believe Tubi. I watched it on Night on Night Flight. I think it's on, it might be on Tubi, but I watched it on Night Flight. It, <laughs> if it's on Tubi, for sure, get it. But Night Flight's a great, uh, I think I might have talked about it on here before. Night Flight's a great um, app to get to if you're ever interested in that shit that they have on there anyway uh (laughs) massacre mafia style is directed by this dude duke mitchell who really truly feels like an early neil breen he feels like an early tommy Wiseau. like he feels like an early director writer actor who only puts himself in the lead characters of movies and you're like (laughs) yes motherfucker go for it but it's also in the 70s so it's like you're talking about like he still has to be there still has to be some proficiency in what he's doing, even though it's completely wacky. He's also done a movie, Gone with the Pope, which I recommend over uh, Massacre Mafia style. But both are clearly what they talk about in the titles of the movie. Uh, It's just fun. It's just a fun one. I have Um, to, fun, I'm sure you already know this, but for a lot of listeners, they might not know this. Duke Mitchell was also part of a very short-lived duo called Duke and Sammy that did one movie called... Bella Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla, uh, mm-hmm. which is considered widely considered one of the worst movies ever made. Yeah. But it also got both of them sued because basically their entire bit was that they just did Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis bits uh, yes. with Duke Mitchell playing Dean Martin and Sammy playing Jerry Lewis. 
and they just did those characters for this entire movie and like Jerry Lewis basically sued them for like you're stealing my act and putting yeah. it in a movie for profit. Yeah, Duke Mitchell was a weird fucking dude. He was like a <laughs> B to C rate crooner and like and he was just like I'm going to do the movies now. Movies are what I do. But it's 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 fun, it's dumb, it's of its time. That's what I watched. Oh yeah. All right, and finally Scott, take us home. Bring up the rear. Um, I Ooh. have watched the first two episodes as of this recording of Moon Knight on Disney Plus. I like it a lot. Um, I would have liked to have them do the WandaVision thing where they gave us the first two episodes the first week, but I also understand that WandaVision episodes were like 20 minutes tops, and so these are 50-minute episodes, and so they're, they're doing a lot, and it's a limited series, so it's only going to be eight episodes, I believe, and then Moon Knight will just get integrated into the uh, cinematic universe, so um, he'll, I, as far as I understand, or they're going to do like a Midnight Suns thing. I like it. I love Oscar Isaac. Um, he's just great it's shot exactly like horror which is fun um but it's not paced really like horror it's paced a little bit more like thriller or like an adventure show which is cool i mean like i get it but um it just there are some points in the show where uh in both of these episodes i could have done with a little bit faster pacing but that's also just because i'm used to shorter episodes for action shows you know yeah, but um, I like it a lot, and I think that Ethan Hawke is fantastic as the yeah. antagonist. Really, really good. I'm pretty sure this is, from what I heard, it's the first streaming show where you're introducing a completely new character. It's not based on an already established MCU character, which is kind of cool. This is kind of fun because it's it's almost like Guardians of the Galaxy for me again, where it's like this is a character I barely know any fucking thing about. Mm -hmm. So like. I'm not I'm not watching it being like, eh, this isn't like the comics. I'm just like, hey, this is fun. Like, and that's and I like... got to say is I don't know the comics very well myself. Um, I've read like one Moon Knight collection and um, I w would be hesitant to say that it is like the comics. I think that they're running pretty fast and loose with some of the characterizations. And that's fine. So familiar with this comic book character believe yeah. it or not but it was only because the most recent run uh like the most recent series was written by max bemis that's oh, how you know about holy it. shit that is such mm -hmm. a weird overlay of you have interests for you <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. that show the, at least the first two episodes i believe are directed by benson and moorhead who did resolution and spring and the Endless are you serious and synchronic yeah i mean wow good for them getting that disney money that's your major horror connection. Not that only would also explain literally... the pacing, yeah. though, yeah. because mm -hmm. I love their movies, but their yeah. pacing has never been my is... thing. No, well, they have a they always have so much to try to explain or attempt mm -hmm. to like connect. And f I, I mean, I agree. Sometimes it's a hit or miss for me. But yeah, not only they released this big Marvel thing, and then at Sundance they did like a two person like you know pandemic almost semi found footage mock like thing. So it's like they are still working in both worlds of like working with as many cast and crew as they can because they're prominent now and mm -hmm. still doing their own like we have to do something. We're in a pandemic, please, we can't just sit here. <laughs> so it's it's a <laughs> so I just double checked. It's actually a combination of they they're doing two of the episodes. They did mm -hmm. episode two and then episode four will be. Oh, okay. I thought they did one them. and two. Okay. It's only a six episode run. Six the episodes. other four episodes are actually being it's his first film project in the States. He's an Egyptian director. Uh, which I think is actually oh. really cool given I how much that. E Egyptian ties are into the show. But that is Episode 350 of Horror Movie Night. Brian, thank you for finding the time to hang out. We'll see you, I guess, in another 50 episodes. We shall see. <laughs> My wife is calling me for dinner, but it was great seeing you guys. I hope to see you all soon. Yep, Good and we'll you, be BK. back next week with more Horror Movie Night. <laughs>